Good morning and welcome to The Art of Composition. Thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. So today I'm going to talk about the gap between photography and art. And I've been a photographer since 1982. I'm 54 years old. So that's a long time. It's over 30, I want to say 38 years or so. And like all photographers, I, you know, I like camera gear. But one of the things that I've noticed about the photography arena, there is a massive gap between art training, real art training, meaning classical skill-based design and classical skill-based art techniques, and the photography arena. There is, not only is it such a massive gap, it is a, it's a New York pothole. It's just that big. And even though I've been in this arena for so long, for over three decades, that hole really hasn't been filled much. It's still a massive crater. And sure, you can go online and you can go to Petapixel and have stoppers and some of the other more popular mainstream photography websites. You can find articles on dynamic symmetry and cartier brisson But that still leaves a massive gap because a lot of that information can't be applied to photography okay when it comes to dynamic symmetry and since i've learned the harmonic armature i have tried to close the gap that i talk about and it's much easier to close that gap because the harmonic armature is much more flexible than dynamic symmetry when it comes to photography at least i think so anyway and one of my goals of my website is to help photographers take their images their photography to a level that i think is close to the level of a drawing and painting now of course there's a lot of classically trained artists that will argue the fact that a photograph is not a drawing and painting and i totally agree look a drawing and a masterful painting is not the same thing as a photograph they're not approached in the same way the idea of the classically trained artist is not to reproduce a photograph It's to interpret what they're seeing in an artistic way. A photograph is a reproduction, basically, of what the eye sees for the most part. And when it comes to classically trained artists that draw and paint, it's not the same thing. And if you notice on my screen, I have a painting by Juliet Aristides. It's a self-portrait. Clearly, this is not a photograph, even though it's realistic looking. But there are major differences between a photograph and a drawing and painting, and you can't mix the two up. You have to at least understand that there is a respectable difference between the two. Now, it doesn't mean, in my opinion, that photography is not art. I think photography is art, or at least I think photography can be art. But in order to elevate photography to that level of what I would consider art, you have to understand design, and you have to understand how to apply classically trained design principles to your photographs and like i said that's one of my goals on my website is to close that gap teach the photographer more about composition and how to bring those classical skills at least a large majority of them over into the photography arena now of course with the photography arena it is nothing but in my opinion about camera gear it's exhausting and don't get me wrong i love expensive camera gear i've been shooting with leica cameras since 1994 i've had about 30 of them i'm not even kidding you i've owned about 30 leicas over the years i have about thirty-five thousand dollars in my camera bag so i get what it means to like camera gear but you have to elevate yourself to a position in photography if you want to be an artist it's not about camera gear and of course you know there's photographers that will come out and say well photography gear is important and i get it i understand that whatever genre of photography you're in you have to find a tool to suit those needs but what i am saying is that a fifteen thousand dollar leica will not produce art the, what will produce art is the knowledge of classical art So it's just something to keep in mind. I'm not downgrading the importance of good camera gear. Of course, I wouldn't do that. I'm not an idiot. Again, I mean, shooting with a Leica and a $10,000 camera body and another $5,000 lens. And I have five of them right now. So I get it. But what I am saying is that you need 
to understand design. And what I want to show today is how you can use the harmonic armature in a painting as well as a photograph in a subject matter that's very similar and that's portraiture. So let me get started. All right, so again, what you see on my screen is a self-portrait of Juliet Aristides. I'm a huge fan. I love her work. I think she is one of the best, if not the best, art instructors out there when it comes to this information. She's written, I think she has four books. I own all her books, okay? And she has four books, uh, Classical Drawing Atelier, Classical Painting Atelier, Lessons in Classical Drawing and Less Lessons in Classical Painting, Beginning Drawing Atelier, which is a sketchbook, and then Figure Drawing Atelier, which I think they're called. They're sketchbooks. They're absolutely beautiful books. If you can, check out my website, buy a copy. Whether you're a photographer or an artist, there is so much great information in there, and it's written in a way that's not intimidating. She has... Aristides, I've talked to her several times, she's incredibly humble, but she has massive skills. She is a brilliant artist and a world leader in this movement called the Atelier Movement. If you can, like I said, check out her books, buy them. Even if you're a photographer, you'll learn a lot about visual literacy. So what I'm going to do today is drop a uh, the harmonic armature on top of a self-portrait by her and show you how she's framing in her subject. And then I'm going to jump to a photograph of a subject that's very much in line with a with the portrait of Aristides so you can compare the two. All right, so this is the painting with the harmonic armature drawn out. It's the harmonic armature is a 14 line grid. The differences between the harmonic armature and dynamic symmetry I I have a video on this and it shows I think in pretty good detail what the differences are. In dynamic symmetry, you have a series of what's called root rectangles. There are specific size rectangles that allow you to break them down into smaller versions of, the, of themselves. I'm not going to get into that today. You can find videos on my website. You can download the book, A Simple Application of Dynamic Symmetry by Mikhail Jacobs. I have it for free on my website. It's a high resolution copy. I talked about it later before. It's a great book. It's, it's, I think, the easiest book to learn, Dynamic Symmetry. And then I have a free PDF on the Harmonic Armature, which really does, I think, dive heavily into the Harmonic Armature. I always recommend starting with the Harmonic Armature first. What you see on my screen is the painting with the Harmonic Armature. And I'm going to show you how Aristides in her self-portrait is framing in using divisions and diagonal lines of the Harmonic Armature. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop lines down and show you how she's locking the portrait into place. Wherever you have two or more diagonal lines, you can drop a horizontal or vertical line. And one of the ways the artist can use the armature is to frame in their subject. In other words, they're placing their subject on a position on the canvas that makes visual sense. It locks it into a position that aligns with the armature of the rectangle, and you can use the diagonal lines of the armature. You can use vertical and horizontal divisions in combinations. And my PDF talks all about this. I have a tremendous amount of videos on this, so I'm going to breeze through this fairly quickly today. But what I'm doing is I'm dropping lines to show you how she's locking the subject in a place. There's two verticals, and then you have a horizontal where these two diagonal lines intersect. It locks the head completely into place. You have these diagonal lines here of the armature locking the chin and the jawline into place. Now there are more divisions. You have another vertical right here. Okay, you have a horizontal line running right at this point where these two diagonal lines intersect and it breaks the upper lip with the bottom lip. You have a horizontal line right here where the eyebrows, you have a vertical running straight down the nose. And what I'm going to do is let me change this to yellow just to outline it and make it a little bit more clear. Okay, so she's framing in her subject using vertical, horizontal, and diagonal lines, right? You have these diagonal lines with the chin and the jaw. Crease between the lips. You have a division right under the nose. Then you have this vertical running straight down the center. This is how she's locking the subject into place using the armature. I believe you also have a horizontal line right here that goes straight through the eyes right at this 
where these diagonal lines intersect, you can bring it straight over right through the eyes. So with just a few lines, she has locked her subject in a position on the canvas that relates to the armature. The armature, when you draw it out in any size canvas, that means there's, there's a relationship between the outer frame and the lines that are in inside the rectangle or square. But these divisions, these ratios are based on musical harmonics, and I talk about that in my PDF. You can also learn more about that in Classical Painting Atelier by Juliet Aristides, Chapter 2. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to a photograph by Vladimir Spiroff and demonstrate how he's doing the same thing in a photograph. Okay, what you see on my screen is a photograph by Vladimir Spiroff, and I think it's a, it's a lovely photograph. Nice values, great, great shot. And what I'm going to demonstrate is I'm going to lay the harmonic armature on top of it and show you how he's framing in the subject, the face, in much the same way that Aristides did in her portrait, thereby closing the gap between drawing, painting, and photography, meaning that even though the application is somewhat different, meaning you're using pencil and paint oils, etc., charcoal, and a camera, the idea of design still remains the same. All right, so here is the photograph with the armature. What I'm going to do is show you how in the photograph it's being framed in as well. So let me let me get started here. I can drop a vertical here where these two diagonal lines intersect and I'll just bring that up to that point at there. I can do this on the other side where these two diagonal lines intersect. I can drop a horizontal line right here, which falls slightly below the chin, right? But where this vertical meets this diagonal line, I can drop a horizontal line, because remember, wherever two lines intersect, you can drop a horizontal or vertical, frames in the top of the head, where, where this light meets the dark. You have a horizontal line here with the eyebrows. You have a vertical running straight down this strong shadow in the nose. You have a horizontal line right here with the lip. Same thing with Juliet Aristides, and that's why I wanted to compare them. You have diagonal lines being played out here and one here. But let me change this to yellow and solidify the line to show you what I mean. So you have vertical and then you have this other vertical on the other side framing in the right hand side. You have the horizontal on top framing in the top, the eyebrows, this horizontal here framing in the chin. You have that horizontal right between the top and the bottom lip. Again, just much like in the same manner as Aristides. You have this vertical running down that strong shadow, that strong contrast between highlight and shadow. It's a distinct vertical line. And it's emphasized by the armature grid, the vertical line. You also have diagonal lines being played out here in the collar, right? You have one here. Now, of course, you don't have to use every line but you have vertical running down this point. And then you have a diagonal line coming into play here. Again, this is how the photographer can act in the same way as the, the artist by framing in their subject in much the same way. This is what I mean by closing the gap. You also have a diagonal line being played out right here as well. And again, it doesn't take a lot of lines, but where you place your subject matters in the frame if it's a photograph on the canvas if it's a drawing and painting that's going to be it for today thanks for joining me i really do hope this helps